it's uh, well, so, such a pleasure to talk to you. How are you? Uh, and what uh, you're, you're not? Well, let's see. You're not Noah. Who are you? You're Clint. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm Clint. I'm right. Noah over here. The guy with the flat tire. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, so I, yeah. this afternoon's been a comedy of errors, Pat. We have a flat tire man over here, and then Chromebook situation here. <laughs> so I guess we're even now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How, how's it been going, uh, Pat? It's, it's so great to 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 see you here uh, virtually. That is. How's it been going? How, how's these last few months? How have you been holding up? Doing okay? Yeah, actually, there's a little story in that uh, when COVID really struck Hollywood, I was in LA doing the reboot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I had done one episode in late February, and then a couple of weeks later, in uh, you know early March, I was back there, and uh, everything was going fine. Everybody just kind of was just joking about the you know the elbow bumps and, and crap like that, but then. I had two days of shooting, and first day there was no concern at all. Everything on on the on the universal lot was going as normal. And then, about the middle of the afternoon, someone said, "Hey, they stopped shooting over at uh, what is it? Uh, AP Bio? You guys know the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of geared toward the same, yeah, like the same yeah. bell kind of show. And so everyone was kind of, what? What the hell's going on? And then another later, uh, about an hour later, they said this other show just stopped, and another show, and then it was this cascade and by you know two hours later we had shut down and uh we just we just finished my scene but there was one more scene to do i don't know if they ever got that in or not but uh then then all of hollywood was just dead it was kind of eerie walking off the off the lot um so uh yeah wow, so I guess things have been dead since then i mean yeah i had <laughs> stuff lined up for about a year after that not so much tv but um, yeah, I'm I'm living in Minneapolis now. That's another thing. I had to fly back to uh, oh. L.A. to do it. So, uh, how are things there in Minneapolis? Obviously, with everything that went on there. So, how are things uh, settling there? It's it has settled down. Yeah, but uh, even even the cleanup is difficult. In that, uh, all the all the burnt out sites and wrecked sites are considered hazardous waste sites. So uh, that like quadruples or quintuples or whatever how many times uh, uh it costs to clean it up uh, it just really increases it so Man. yeah it's uh it's tough yeah well you're originally from wisconsin correct yeah just 90 miles east of minneapolis in eau claire wisconsin yeah oh i know eau claire that's awesome the chiefs uh we're in kansas city the chiefs used to do their training camp in river falls which yeah. is uh, up that, yeah. in that general vicinity. So yeah. definitely know that area. Does that mean you're a Packers fan or a Vikings fan? I, how do I'm we? A Packers. Packers. Okay. Well, nothing Although wrong with that. I am that. a Twins fan, there's something more visceral about the football uh, fan fanship, I think. <laughs> well, I, so, you know, as far as we know, I mean, we, we were, uh, you know, because we're, we're knee deep in this uh, Saved by the Bell podcast. So we were talking to some other characters that had been a part of the reboot. And this is around, you know, March or April and or around March when you were talking about it, and they were like, yeah, we were joking about it. We came in to film our stuff and then all of a sudden it just shut down. So oh. I, like, I don't who, know where they're at with to? it. Who are you talking to? Uh, we were talking to Peter Brezhnev. He was just uh, played a Russian chess player in one of the episodes. And I think he's playing a different like a mailman or something in, in this one. So I don't think it's the same character, but uh, he had mentioned His name's, kind of, uh, Matt Kaminsky. Matt Kaminsky, yeah, yeah, and I don't. You, you may not have crossed paths with him. He was no. in different seasons than you, on the show. But uh, you know, <laughs> the show is is we're talking about thirty years since really we've seen Mr. Dewey. Yeah, at, and so what does it say about this character that thirty years later he's met with such reverence? He makes Noah's number two list on list on staff members and Saved by the Bell history. Probably should have been number one. I know. <laughs> well, how am I gonna? beat belding am i come on now come on that, i was pretty i was quite amazed that i was number two after belding you know basically that's number one i mean of the of the recurring staff i mean exactly and yeah, yeah, many of the faculty there. the teachers yeah that's that's number one that's a great way to look at it yeah. what's that saying about about this character i mean it's well you dog. tell me hi I'm, I'm a humble guy you tell hey. me what that means <laughs> it, it means that Saturday mornings, a daytime television. Brandon Tartikoff, Peter Engel. They had uh, they 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 had a hit. They had they did something right. Uh, the way that the staff members interacted with the kids, there was something there, and there was something yeah. there for us that we really related to. And uh, your character, the deadpan nature of Mr. Dewey, lives on. I loved uh, his delivery on everything that he did. 
That wasn't the first time I've ever done a deadpan uh, character. Some people say I was ripping off uh, uh, Ben Stein from uh, Ferris you know, Bueller's Day, Day Off. Yeah. But uh, I had done a dead man, a dead man, deadpan character before he did it. So, so there. <laughs> Well, what kind of input and in ad libs do you, did you have for that, if any, on the character of Mr. Dewey? I don't remember. I, <laughs> I don't remember any ad libs, actually. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it stuck to the script for pretty much. But uh, um, so I, I'm just trying to picture Mr. Dewey on the page being as hilarious and coming to life as much. I mean, you had you obviously brought something to that that really resonated. So. It couldn't have all just been right there on the page, Pat. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to bring your own thing to it. Yeah. And like I said, I had it in my bag of tricks, you know, that, uh, that character. So uh, it wasn't that hard. But I do remember uh, the original audition. You see, I was, I was in uh, uh, the episode of uh, the, uh, the King of the Hill which although it wasn't the first episode shown, it was actually written as the first episode. You guys aware of that? Is yes. That yeah, now? that's how we did it in our podcast. Yeah. Even though it's like oh. episode 15 or something like that, we moved it to episode one because that really is the true first episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was what, you know, that was when they were first auditioning everyone, you know? And so I was, yeah, luckily one of the first characters that they had envisioned, I think. Um, but I remember it was a bit more of an involved process than most, uh, you know, usually you just go in one time, you know, you maybe you read for the casting director and then you go in for the producers and the director. But this one, there was like a three-step process, I think. So they were, yeah, they were checking me out, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I thought that the first line was what, what is it? I'm, uh, uh, oh, it's something he's, he's walking into the class, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe you guys know the line better. Uh, uh, um, sit down and shut up, I'm tired, uh, uh, let's get on with it, or something like that, which just kind of encapsulated. You, you know the your line? summer, mine stunk, let's get started. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you, thank you. You guys, <laughs> you fans of the show, it's, it's, it's amazing. But uh, yeah, which kind of, I thought, encapsulated the character. So I, I think that was the only line that I ever actually auditioned with and uh, so yeah and what do you remember just working on the show with the kids the cast uh, Peter Engel executive producer from the show uh, kind of his direction uh, Dennis Haskins as Mr. Belding I know the kids you probably didn't get a, a big chance to hang out with because they were off uh, in trailers or whatever uh, taking their classes so they yeah, just didn't right. get to hang out on set so yeah. uh, what was yeah. your interaction like with the cast and crew and I tended to stay you know, I'm kind of an introvert anyway, so I would stay in my dressing room anyway quite a bit, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I got to know Belding, actually. We played cards a couple times, and uh, I'd see him at auditions, and, uh, yeah, um, he'd lament how he wasn't working like he had been on Saved by the Bell, you know, but it's a common, common occurrence in L.A. But uh, I just remember that, that uh, Mario was the most outgoing and personable of all of them. You know, he was, he's like he is now, you know, he's a yeah. glad hander and, you know, uh, shake your hand and talk your ear off, uh, you know. So he was, he was really a nice guy. And uh, the other ones kind of kept to themselves. I mean, I'm different generation and, uh, well, they, yeah, they, yeah, they hung around by themselves. And of course, mm -hmm. Screech was younger than them. So that was kind of, <laughs> it, it, but that's known to everybody, right? And say by the bell land. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, what kind of just as a general sense here, I mean, around this time, you're, you're just kind of everywhere. You're in so many shows. You're in The Wonder Years. Uh, you're on, um, you know, Babylon 5. You show up on, um, what was it? Home Improvement, uh, yeah. Married with Children, Family Matters, Night Court. What, I mean, there's so many memorable was, shows. Yeah, what was, I mean, that, that was all within about a five, six year period of time. I mean, you were, was that the busiest time you ever had working in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, I got there in 87. And I was doing more theater back then. I did, you know, a show down, a couple of shows down in San Diego. And, but then, yeah, the TV started to happen. And uh, uh, the uh, Night Court was the big break. I got, a, you know, that good, good guest star on that. And then kind of took off from there. And 
yeah, that was a good period. And then, yeah, and then back around 2000, things kind of slowed down. In the 2004, we moved back. I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Around 2004, things slowed down. And then in 2007, we moved, I moved back to the you know Midwest with the family. And uh, uh, we had a kid, we had a, we had a, you know, baby in 2004. So uh, we kind of wanted to bring him up in a little more wholesome environment mm-hmm. back here. And, uh, and I was getting a little tired of all the tiny roles and uh, wanted to do more theater. And Minneapolis is a good theater town, kind of a well-kept secret in that respect. And uh, I anticipated doing more theater back here. It really hasn't panned out. And uh, yeah, we were back here for less than a few months and me both my wife and I realized that it was a mistake to move back here, but, uh, really? but here we are. And, uh, and we're actually kind of hoping that this reboot might, uh, you know, open up to more stuff and we'd move back there once uh, our kid is out of high school. So. Yeah. What were some of your biggest dreams when you thought about being an actor and you started getting roles you talked about, you got tired of some of the small roles. Uh, was it the theater for you or did you have uh, kind of visions of uh, being a star or co-star in some movies moving well, down the sure. line? Or, Who doesn't? Yeah. 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 You have that dream of uh, getting that series regular. And I almost had it a little known thing that, uh, and this was right before saved by the bell. Oprah Winfrey did a pilot out in LA it was called Chicago grapevine. Guess what the plot was? She was a small town person moving to Chicago to be a talk show host. <laughs> that's, that's what the plot How'd was. How'd they come up with that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was a series regular, one of the writers on the show. Oh, wow. And I was kind of the, the hand-packed, and you know, my wife was also a writer, and I was kind of the, the, the yes, 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 ma'am, uh, yes, dear kind of character. Um, <laughs> But uh, it didn't get picked up, oddly enough. But, you know, when, when I got cast, I said, hey, get ready to move to Chicago, because if Oprah Winfrey wants to do with this, it's going to happen. But it just wasn't a very good script. And, you know, she, she was really good in some of the films that she did, you know, what Color Purple, but uh, yeah. she didn't come across all that well in a sitcom for some reason. So hmm. uh, it is uh, a different style. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your connections to the Saved by the Bell world they, you know, it kind of goes round and round because we've had a uh, writer Bennett Tramer here on the yeah. show. And then you wind up appearing in the film Camp Cucamonga, which I was a huge fan of as a kid. I could still sing the, the theme song to that. Uh, and then also you wind up being in um, a dead man on campus with Mark Paul. So yeah. how did you, 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 you're, you're, you kind of stayed in the, within the realms of Saved by the Bell there a little bit for, uh, for at least a brief period of time there. How, how did that all happen? Was it just because of your relationship with Bennett? Yeah, I think so. Or with NBC in general. I yeah. just was uh, getting cast in NBC shows quite a bit. You know, they were bringing him in for the, you know, the head casting directors. And uh, in fact, I didn't even have to re- audition for Camp Cucamonga. I think it was the first time they said, hey, we got a part for you. And I said, well, what? With no audition. <laughs> that was the first time that had ever, ever happened. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he was the producer, one of the you know, writer and producer, I think, of Camp Cucamonga. So, mm-hmm. Who else was in from Saved by the Bell was in that though? I'm not aware of anyone. I think it was just, no, I don't think there was another cast member, but it was uh, Steve Urkel was in that. Yeah, I did an episode of uh, Family Matters. Family Matters, Family Matters yeah. with him. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it weird? Oh, God. I mean, because you could tell, I mean, the regular cast who had had this kind of sophisticated sitcom before. And then Urkel came in and it was completely different. And you can tell, I mean, they were all nice people, but you could tell that they resented the fact that this guy was now the star of the show. And, and they had just really transformed in their opinion. And I think rightfully so their opinion that it, you know, it was, it, it not demeaned, what's the word, um, diminished the show, I think his, great for the ratings, but yet it wasn't the show that it was before. But yeah, I think we've heard Reginald Bell Johnson, uh, who played Carl Winslow in the show The Dad, the cop dad, yeah. uh, come out and talk about that, how he loved how the show started out and where it was going. And then when Urkel came in, he yeah. stole the show and completely transformed it into something yeah. that they weren't really super excited about being a part of because they had such high hopes for where the show was going into, uh, initially. Yeah. Well, 
I got to ask you about Pleasantville because you play Roy in Pleasantville. To this day, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Uh, I, I love Don Knotts. Of course, William H. Macy, yep. Um, yep. Reese Witherspoon, Tobey Maguire. They're young and they're coming up movie. and coming. But yeah, it is a great movie. Yes. And you're part of the town of Pleasantville, part of one of the townspeople, Roy. Man, you worked with some great, great actors in that movie. What, what was the experience like? And was it kind of cool? I mean, I'm assuming you're probably kind of a fan of that, uh, you know, the, the, the throwback style of the fifties, like leave it to beaver. That's kind of what it was parodying. And that was it cool weird, to be kind of back in that way. I'm going to toss this in here. Um, I was, I can't remember what movie it was for though, uh, but it was a, a period piece period movie. And, and the casting director was, I mean, the, the, the costume person was fitting me for, you know, the, the, it might've been, it might've been Stuart little. Um, and she said to me, you have such a period face. I said, what the hell do you mean a period? How can you have a period face? You got period <laughs> hair growth or something. And, and she said, I don't know, but you have it. I said, okay. And I got to thinking that almost all the films I did were kind of period pieces. Uh, ba- uh, 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 Benjamin, Benjamin Button, Button yeah. Pleasantville, Stuart Little, all, and uh, Pleasantville, all these, you know, period pieces. So I guess there's something to that. But uh yeah, odd little tidbit, but uh, um, but yeah. What was your question? Did well, I just digress? just going thinking? back into that world? Like, I mean, you talked about being a you know a time having a time Pleasant period though. face, but yeah, it was just what a powerful and impactful story. It was multi layered, and it was uh, you know just yeah. not not just on the surface. You had such a great cast, Jeff Daniels. I'm leaving out so many. It's like one of the best casts. Yeah, uh, what what just what was kind of the experience like working with some of the, some of the best actors in Hollywood right there great. I mean, yeah. And the script itself, that was, that was cool too. I went in for the casting director and then the second time went in right for, um, um, uh, uh, Ross, Gary Ross, which was weird. You usually don't go in. It was just me and the casting director and Gary Ross. Uh, usually it's a room full of people. And, and I didn't, I don't think I even had to read for him because he had seen my, you know, the, the first audition with the casting director. And he said, it just kind of, it was more of a, Hey, welcome to the show and a uh, whole oh, really i mean i think as i was i had seen the script and i thought this is you know oscar worthy you know academy award stuff and i was kind of disappointed that it didn't make the splash that i thought it would have you know i think it got one award for you know special effects or something like that but uh but that was it um but yeah i think it's just a brilliant movie and, and like you said it works on so many levels and uh yeah. Did you get a chance to meet Don Knotts at all during that? I know he was around just a little bit. Yeah, I didn't have any scenes with him. So, uh, uh, but at the at the screening, yeah, I went up to him. I you know, I sought him out, and he had his his person with him, and uh, he was pretty frail by then. But I went yeah. up to him. I was like, "Man, Mr. Knotts, you know, I, I really, I you know, I'm 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 your type, and and I'd always go out for the Don Knotts type, and." And thanks for paving the way. And I just loved you on, you know, because I grew up with uh, him on uh, um, on Andy Griffith. And, oh, yeah. But he didn't have much to say. Like I said, he was mm. pretty frail. And, uh, well, thank you. And that was about it. And, uh, you know, I tried to talk him up, but uh, not very successfully. But uh, Well, at least that's a cool moment that you get to share that he paved the way for your type of character. So yeah. uh, that has to be a good moment that you look back on. But yeah. And I don't know how much filming is going on currently in Hollywood, but you've got a couple of things in post-production, uh, some projects here. Uh, you played Wayne and Sold Out and Patrick in Breakdowns. Uh, talk to us a little bit about those and what we can expect. Well, those are local, and I doubt if you'll ever see Breakdowns. I mean, that was very low budget thing. And but uh, sold out might, you know, make it to Netflix or something. I doubt if it will make the big screen. But it was a pretty good script, and uh, I had a much different role. I played an alcoholic father of the lead woman and uh, lead character and uh, had some pretty heavy scenes, breaking down crying because of trying to reunite with her. And uh, so that was a that was nice to do something different like that. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. It was very low budget though, a, a husband and wife team uh, producing mm-hmm. and uh, he directed and she did everything else. I think, well, she wrote most of it. Uh, and um, um, so yeah, it's taken a long time because it's been yeah. a year and a half since uh, since we shot it. And uh, so, but it's kind of a timeless film. So hopefully it'll, uh, 
see the light of day. Really hope it does. Yeah. It'd be tremendous. Any time that we we see you, I mean, it just it's there's something about about you and the characters you play that you know we've always the both of us has always just had such reverence for. Is there something that people recognize you more than than anything else? Is it Saved by the Bell? Is it Mr. Dewey? If someone were just to run into you and say oh, say hi on the street, no, yeah, it's definitely Saved by the Bell. I yeah, mean, you know, <laughs> thirty-five to forty-five. Well, yeah, that, those are the that demographic. Yeah, and you've been in hundred. I mean, just dozens and dozens and do of movies and shows and big ones and 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 yet here it's this saturday morning show that <laughs> that's incredible people we I lived, mean, okay we lived in burbank uh right down the street from a junior high and in uh, you know the early 90s and and no one you know i didn't think anything of you know saved by the bell and then all of a sudden, these kids are starting to gather out in front of our house, you know, that they're recognizing this guy who, you know, I'm working on it on the lawn or something. And then this kid came up to the door and knocked and said, is Mr. Dewey home? <laughs> and, <laughs> and sure. And, and, and so, so he wanted an autograph. So I got an eight by 10 for him and signed it for him. And my wife would just be in the background just laughing <laughs> that, uh, that this was happening. Um, but uh, um, and because we had kids at the time who were actually too young for Saved by the Bell. We have this older generation of kids who are now in their late 20s and early 30s. And then we have the 16 year old and they weren't watching Saved by the Bell. But um, uh, but yeah, all these kids, then the, the clumps of kids from the junior high would start knocking on the door. And uh, but yeah, that's. But I would get, you know, even without say by the bell with other generations of TV and film viewers, it was more of like, hey, you're that guy, uh, 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 that guy on, uh, you know, <laughs> that guy, you know, so that yeah. was, you know, but, uh, better to be that guy than no guy at all, Pat, guess, it is, yeah, yeah. You, you know what, it's been a great career. And I'll tell you, I, we're, we got to put you on the spot here, because I think Noah, sent you over a, a classic line here. And I think we're gonna, we might try to re reprise this very famous line from Saved by the Bell, if you have it So handy. whatever you have to do to get into the mindset of Mr. Dewey, to bring that character out, take I your time. Write it down here. So we down. make all of our guests do this here on, on Saved by Nostalgia because, uh, you know, and so, so, some have been tremendous. Some have never recited the line in 30 years and it shows, but I, I think this is gonna be, we have the highest expectations for this. <laughs> No pressure. Well, I, I should have shaved and I should have put on my nerd glasses, I guess, but uh, let's we'll see what I can do here. Um, okay, the, this will involve all three of us. I guess Noah will play Zach, I will play Slater, and Mr. Dewey is right right here. It's uh, perfect. All right. Scene. Hey, we weren't arguing. Yeah, we were just discussing a math problem, how two into one won't go. I don't believe it, I don't care. I'm tired, I have a toothache, and I have to go home and pump iron. <laughs> See, that was great. <laughs> we that, cannot thank you enough for that. That was... That, 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 you know, the better line, someone sent me this, I'd forgotten all about it, but it came back to me, I think was, uh, um, how does it go? You make fun of math now, Mr. Morris, but when you're old and uh, at a cocktail party and everybody's talking, making logarithm jokes, you won't have anyone, ah, shit, I'm screwing it up. No, that was it. Yeah, everybody's making <laughs> logarithm jokes. You won't have any idea what everybody's talking about, which I think is the best line that I ever <laughs> had. Maybe. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That or I'm line. off to my trial for American Gladiators. And I think, I believe, did you talk to Noah about you had a kind of an idea for what, what might have happened to Mr. Dewey at, at, after his trial for American Gladiators? What, what? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That he gets, he hooks up with, uh, <laughs> with a six foot Amazon gladiator and. Uh, uh, named Gash. <laughs> named Gash, yeah. There yeah. Is. <laughs> well, it's, it's unfortunate because later, I think in season two, they do have like an American Gladiator sort of referen reference where um zach and mr belding like do a joust with the costume on but there was no mr dewey and i just thought that they they really missed the boat on this one there yeah on bringing that back <laughs> well i tell you what pat so sorry that we had such a auspicious beginning to this interview with we were just riddled with problems to start and yet we got got it got it in and i'm so glad we did it's been a true pleasure yeah thank well, you so much 
believe us, it is an honor and it means more to us than you'll ever know. We love everything that you've done in your career that we've been able to watch. Uh, we love your character. We just hope for the best things for you and your family moving forward, my friend. Oh, gosh, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> hey, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll definitely be in touch. Can't wait to see what, uh, what comes down the pike. So keep it okay. going. Keep it coming out. We appreciate hey. it. All right.